I've lived in Japan for almost 23 years now, but recently I've started thinking maybe it's time for me to start learning Japanese again. So I came to Japan in the summer of the year 2000, so July 17th, I think, was my arrival date. I came on jet,、uh, and as part of that, we did, I think, we did a few hours of language training before we came. But basically, I got to Japan and I could basically introduce myself、uh, and say, Atsui desu ne. Of course, Atsui desu ne was about as useful a <laughs> phrase as you could get in the summer. In Japan. After that, you know, I was working in、uh, a junior high school, and in my opinion, working in a school is one of the best language learning environments there is because you're exposed to all different registers of the Japanese language. So you can listen to kids talking to kids, you can listen to teachers talking to kids, you can listen to teachers talking to their colleagues within the school, and also teachers talking to the parents. So you get all these different registers of politeness, of status,、uh, and so on. So I think it's a wonderful place to learn.、Uh, and I picked up a fair amount.、Uh, I met my now wife, then girlfriend, and her kids, and talked to them eventually. Only in Japanese.、Uh, so, my Japanese language progression was okay. I actually studied Chinese at university.、Uh, I didn't do very well at that, but it did give me a little bit of a kanji base. So, when I came into trying to learn Japanese,、uh, I had at least that basis where I knew about the kind of components of kanji and, and the rough shapes of kanji, maybe how to write the kanji and so on. So, that was okay. I think I got my JLPT 2. So, NQ, i this is old NQ i after two years. And then I tried、uh, to take EQ、um, in my third year in Japan and failed horribly because I didn't study very much. I'm very much a kind of natural learner, so I learn from listening、uh, and interacting rather than from studying. So, I found it really hard to study. At least I didn't study.、Uh, and so, it took me, I think, five years to pass the EQ. i <laughs> I took it every year. JLPT used to be once a year only. And every year I wouldn't study, I'd take the test, I'd fail. Another year, take the test, fail.、Uh, and eventually it passed somehow, I think, because it was averaged out. My listening was very good, I was getting 90%, 90 on the listening.、Uh, the kanji part was really difficult, the reading was quite difficult. So eventually, I, I think, you know, if you give a monkey a typewriter, eventually they'll write Hamlet, right? So eventually I passed the EQ, and I haven't really studied Japanese since. My Japanese level now, I would say that I'm okay day to day. So I can understand pretty much everything that I run into on a daily basis. I can pretty much say whatever I want to, even if I don't have the exact words for it. I can probably pass for Japanese on the phone for a few minutes at least. And I can read online, I can type in Japanese, I can write formal emails and so on. I can give presentations in Japanese. I've given 90 minute presentations in Japanese about teaching, about money. So basically, everyday conversation is fine. My specialized subjects, which are education and, and specifically English education and personal finance, those are fine.、Uh, and basically, I haven't felt the need to study any more than that until recently. So, I've been spending a lot of time in hospitals recently, and hospitals are pretty much the only place left in Japan where you have to write things by hand.、Uh, and I find it really Frustrating and, and slightly humiliating not to be able to fill in those forms without you know, pulling out my phone and laboriously、uh, copying kanji across. I have been thinking recently that maybe I should go back to studying Japanese and maybe I should work on my writing because that's my real problem. Um, handwriting Japanese. I think that's the, that's the most difficult skill for people who don't come from a, a kanji background.、Uh, and I think it's the skill that takes the most time. and For a lot of people, it's probably not worth developing that skill. So, the amount of time you'd have to put in to, to become competent at writing Japanese probably isn't worth it for the results, you know, especially nowadays where most of the time we're, we're using the computer to, to write Japanese and so on. But I am thinking of naturalizing in Japan, and I think having naturalized it would be a little bit lame. To be illiterate. So I've decided to start studying a bit again. And more than studying, it's practicing. So there's two, I've identified two things that I need to do in order to upgrade my Japanese.、So、I need to read more, and that means basically reading online and reading books. 
Uh, and the key here, for me at least, is to find things that I find interesting. So for me that's reading personal finance, maybe reading novels. Uh, I'm not that into manga, to be honest, but I'll try and find some manga that I like, uh, and I'll read stuff online. And the other thing is writing, and to get better at writing, you basically need to write. Uh, and I think there's, again, there's, there's a couple of elements to that. One is learning kanji. Uh, and the other is just copying stuff, copying stuff out, writing stuff out. I'm going to be trying out for the kanji kente again. So for me, the kanji kente is one of the best Japanese language tests out there. It's actually designed for kids, mostly. The upper levels are for adults, of course. But the kanji kente is wonderful because it's a test that tests your reading ability, your word ability, your writing ability. It's all in there. Um, they're testing you using stories from Japanese culture that all the kids know that you can learn uh, and that are really important culturally. Best of all, the tests are cheap, the study materials are cheap, tests are run in a really user-friendly manner, very different from the JLPT, which I find quite user-unfriendly uh, in terms of the organisation and how the tests were set up when I took them. So I'll be using these tests to slowly move myself up. So I do actually have one of these tests. I passed the 7Q, I think. So I think I have 7Q Kanji Kente, which is the equivalent of third grade elementary school. So the Kanji Kente starts from 10, so 10Q for the Kanji Kente is first grade in elementary school. So it covers the, the materials that a, a, a six-year-old child would be familiar with. And then they go up through the grades. So 9Q is second grade, 8Q, actually maybe I've got 8Q. So I've got an 8Q test, I passed that somehow. <laughs> and so next I'll be going for 7. And 7 is fourth grade basically. And I'd like to get to maybe junior high school level at some point. Uh, being able to read and write at a junior high school level would be acceptable, I think. At least better than where I am now, where my basically my writing has atrophied completely to the point where I'd struggle to write hiragana sometimes, because I can't remember how to write specific hiragana uh, and so on. Another thing about the kanji kente tests is that at the lower levels it's just kids, so it's actually kind of fun to go and take the test with the kids. Um, I remember when I took the 8Q, it was me and a bunch of seven or eight year olds, it was hilarious. Um, so I was sitting there, you know, enormous guy with all these little kids. Uh, and I was doing the test and the test started and there's a little girl sitting next to me and she was probably about six years old. Obviously she didn't really understand what tests were and how they work. So she, she kind of looked over at me and she saw that I was having trouble writing one of the kanji. So she kind of nudged me and, and showed me her paper where she'd written it. <laughs> so she helped me try to <laughs> pass the, So I passed the test. I'm not sure if it was thanks to her help, but that really made my day, uh, that experience. And I think it's, it's the kind of fun experience that you can have in Japan by kind of trying out these kind of community activities and so on. So yeah, if you're learning Japanese, if you're, especially if you're, you want to learn to write Japanese, Kanji Kente test uh, is excellent, uh, very reasonable, and the books are available everywhere. You can get them in the 100 yen shop even, I believe. So definitely worth checking those out. There used to be a DS game for it, Nintendo DS. Uh, I'm sure there's similar things online and, and on smartphones now as well. So my mission for the next couple of years, so I'm thinking of naturalizing in, I think I've got five years left on my passport, so I wanna do it before then. So uh, probably two or three years before I, I take the step to naturalize uh, and I would like to get my Japanese up a little bit in that time because the last time I had an interview for naturalization I got a quite an unpleasant case officer uh, he was a bit younger than me uh, and very kind of rude and dismissive towards me uh, and at one point during the interview he pulled out a piece of paper and said yeah I want you to write your essay now and I was like really so I, I kind of you know at the time, it was, I, was, I was slightly better than I am now at writing Japanese, but not much. And so I kind of pulled out my phone, and he was like, no, no, without the phone. I was like, I can't write an essay without my phone, dude. <laughs> and that was just a very kind of unpleasant, humiliating experience that I don't want to go through again. So 
just getting myself to the point where I can I can write basic Japanese without having to look up too much of the content. How about you? Where is your Japanese level at the moment? Are you happy? Uh, would you like to improve it? Are you currently working on your Japanese? Any hints for me as I resume this journey after 15 years of not really bothering? Please leave any comments or questions or advice in the comments below uh, and I'll see you in the next video.